wait a moment. Was there a Tokyo Snow? That's, that's like I mean, the one yeah, collector's like edition. Yeah. 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 There was one. Yeah. There was one. 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 There was Hi. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I felt like... Sorry. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Morning. Good 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 we're immunocompromised, so appreciate it. Sure. Hi. <laughs> We're gonna start introducing ourselves. I'm Dana. I'm M. And I'm Kim. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah. All right. All right. So first, we have one of my favorite videos. Please enjoy. I know I do. for the panel, but um, they had a JoJo description underneath our panel, um, oh. which I thought was pretty funny. Okay, that makes sense now. It's basically JoJo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so before we get into the panel, um, how many people have played, I'll kind of go through them, um, any game from the Infinity series? Yeah. Cool. Nice. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Um, what about Zero Escape? Yeah. Oh, whoa. More hands. <laughs> And I. Uh, awesome. This sort of... And has anyone not played an Ichikoshi game? A few people. All right. Hopefully we can convert you. I feel like that's my job. Um, I have converted many people to Uchikoshi. Um, and they just say they are in the Uchikoshi brain rot. So we will get you there, hopefully. Um, so Kotaro Uchikoshi is this lovely man right here. Um, he is a Japanese video game writer and director. 
Um, he incorporates a lot of elements of sci-fi, philosophy, and technology into his works. Um, he really loves plot twists. We always are waiting for that big Uchikoshi moment, as I like to call it, where you do the thing and you're like, oh my god, they did the thing. Um, and he really liked narrative-based games from an early age, and I think that um, shows a lot through his work. It's really fun when you're showing his games to other friends, and they're like, live blogging it to you, basically, and then they get to the plot twist, and it's just key smash, pulling it to screams. <laughs> so, we all played um, the second eye game together, and we were all just like, oh. <sighs> very fun. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. This no. panel will be no spoilers, just so Good. you're all aware. <laughs> Um, so some of Uchikoshi's early work in life, he worked for KID, or Kindle Imagine Develop, starting in 1998. He wrote scripts and scenarios for Bishojo games, my fave, personally. Um, these games focus a lot more on the narrative and the storytelling, so choosing your own adventure rather than character interactions. All right, and our first official thing we got... This is sort of a change from... Oh, my well, God. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Um, basically, your Pepsi man needs to go through some stages and you run around and get Pepsi. It's fun. <laughs> There's always a Pepsi man at every con and it gets me every time. So. I don't think they know. So, <laughs> you know. Alright, so that's Pepsi man. But, so, oh, now we are one. to what we were just saying. Um, you know, dating sim sort of style games. Um, I saw this actually at a store in Little Tokyo the other day, um, but it is in Japanese, so I unfortunately cannot play it. If you know Japanese, you can. All right, um, um, to our knowledge, we did not find anyone that was working on a translation of this at this time. Nope. Um, so if that's something you'd like to do, please hit us up. Since memories off, the memories off second. Um, there are more games in the series. As far as we know, he only did these two. Um, so they were released in 1999 and 2000. Um, they are, you know, visual novel dating sim style games. Um, you're a high school protagonist, obviously with multiple love interests. Um, he's a very plot focused writer. I would say was something that people pointed out. Um, especially in regards to these games. Although people did say the second had some more mature content, I did see people say um, they liked the themes more in the second game, but the characters more in the first game. Um, but it got received generally favorable to mixed reviews. Um, and they did note one of the critiques was that it was a bland main character, although I'm Personally, myself, as someone who has played some dating sims, that is common in dating sims, but Uchikoshi um, sort of carried that with him and would pay it to mind in his later works. Never seven, mm. the end of infinity. I don't know why I said that like the Burger King foot lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> it just came to me. Has anyone played this game? Yep. Nice. I just played it for the first time recently and it was wild. I loved it. I was live vlogging it to you guys. Yeah, it's great. It was fun. So this is the first game in the Infinity series. It was released in 2000. Um, you play as a main character, Makoto Ishihara. You are at a collegiate camp on an island. You don't know why you're there. There's for team building exercises and such. You're trapped there by a tropical storm, so you can't escape. Um, basically, you can pursue the female characters, dating sim style, while you're on the island, and then the story branches off based on which character you decide to pursue. This is the first game where Uchikoshi got to sort of explore more of the science fiction elements that we're so fond of um, in kind of continuing along the line of his works. Um, this game was critically received pretty well due to his use of science fiction in driving his storylines. Alright, yeah. this game is Ever 17, The Out of Infinity. Let's play Ever shit. 17. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so Big Ever 17 was released in 2000. <laughs> um, you play as two separate main characters, um, Takeshi and the Kid, um, who are both trapped in the, a underwater amusement park known as Limu um, with some pretty girls. 
Um, so it is kind of similar to that dating sim kind of elements again, where you get to pursue some of those girls and follow their storyline. Uh, of course, um, as we all love Uchikoshi, there's a true storyline um, where you have to do specific things in order to get that and do specific other ones first. Um, so it is considered one of the best in its genre. Um, some of the top things are the story, the characters, um, plot devices, the music's really cool. Um, and it does have those sci-fi elements. It has philosophy, it has mysticism and conspiracy theories. We love those, of course. Um, so you, you do those different paths and you kind of figure out how they all connect and um, how the characters are interacting. Um, just a comment. Why is the dog named PP? I still don't know. Um, but he's pretty cute, so there's that. <laughs> and you can play Kick the Can. Kick yeah, the Can the best. Very long Kick the Can sequence in, I think, every path. Um, so that's lovely. Um, and you can eat some sandwiches all the time. You can all also sandwich. eat lettuce with ketchup. Well, you can watch someone eat lettuce with ketchup. You can watch someone eat lettuce with ketchup. Oh. I'd rather not. <laughs> But it's epic. Yeah. <laughs> this is All the right. actual goat. Next we have Remember Eleven. Who's played Remember Eleven? The actual Yay! Awesome. Which one is your favorite? Which one is my favorite? I like Ever Seventeen and then Remember Eleven, but they're like kind of right, right next to each other. For me. Same. Yeah. Because um, I think they're I, they're both really good stories, um, so it's hard for me to pick. But Ever Seventeen kind of like beats it out, but like a little bit for me. Um, so Remember Eleven was released in 2004. Um, you play as these two characters, um, Satsuru and Kokoro, who just so happen to switch consciousnesses. Um, Kokoro is trapped in a cabin on a mountain um, after a plane crash, and Satsuru is trapped in an insane asylum, and he has amnesia and basically has no idea why he's there. Classic. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we love those amnesia characters. Um, so the big like psychological elements of this game are identity and reality. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, it's kind of hard to describe without spoiling anything. Um, but the important thing is that you make different choices as one character and they'll affect what the other character is doing when you switch back to their consciousness. Um, so you kind of have to organize yourself and organize this timeline so that you're figuring out which thing, which um, person you're affecting and make sure you're doing the right thing. You die a lot. There's a ton of bad endings. Um, mm -hmm. And there we have um, lovely quantum mechanics, our yes. game. Um, <laughs> so we love that. Um, and in general, the game was received really well, which I think is cool. Um, but some people say that the final ending felt a little incomplete, so there is um, this website that kind of goes through everything. I forget what it's called. Someone probably knows here. Remember Eleven Explained. That one, thank you. Remember hey, Eleven Explained. Remember if you get to the end of the game and you're like, what just happened? Um, what is going on? Um, or you're having an identity crisis, I recommend that website so that you can kind of understand a little bit more of what happened and some of the more behind the scenes things as well. It doesn't help that the bad endings, some of the bad endings actually have more plot than the actual ending. Yes. Yeah, there's a ton of bad endings too, so I think that makes it tough to kind of get mm -hmm. all of the information in there. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> So here's the dark times, lol. Um, we're never gonna know the erotic, <laughs> erotic game that was uncredited and unknown. He won't tell us. But, um, so for a while, he was just doing some freelance work. Um, we do have the second erotic <laughs> game name. So, um, you know. Um, but then in 2007, he joined Spike Chunsoft. Yay, shout out to Alex. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next game we have is Twelve Ribbon. Ribbon, sorry, which is kind of like the fourth removed cousin of the Infinity series. Um, it was released in 2008, so it's like kind of related, but so not in the fully in the series, I guess. Um, 
You play as Ren Maru, um, and he receives a message saying that this girl Mew will be killed. Um, you also play as Narumi, who is a um, detective, and she got the same message, so um, they're trying to figure out how to fix everything and save the world, because there's a level XXX situation, um, which is bad. <laughs> um, so this game is not, there's no official translation. Um, there is someone who did a live translation of the game, um, which you can find on YouTube, mm. um, which is probably the only way you're able to play it, unless you're able to read Japanese. Um, so if you are interested in playing this game, you can watch it fully on YouTube, um, translated live, which I think is pretty cool. That is probably part of why it is hard to remember this one exists for a lot of people, yeah. but you know, if somebody works on a translation, maybe people will remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, if anyone knows translating, now's your time to pop off. Oh, there we go. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I think this was a lot of people's intro to Uchikoshi, um, probably because it was obviously more easily accessible in America. I remember before I played this game, I read it on, I think it was a Something Awful thread. <laughs> so you press play on the sound clip and you get to listen to about 12 seconds of the soundtrack before another clip starts playing. Um, so hopefully you read really slowly or else you don't get the full experience. But then playing it was pretty cool. Um, first person voted gay on Twitter. Legally. <laughs> yeah. Perfect, good stuff. Confused a lot of Metal Gear fans, but they were in solidarity, so it worked out. <laughs> yeah, so it's fine. Oh. Yeah. Um, so nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. Exactly what it sounds like. There are nine characters trapped on a ship. They have nine hours to escape through a door marked with a nine. So a lot of this, again, is deciding which path to take, which characters to go through to get through the doors. You have to do a lot of math, which is unfortunate sometimes, but <laughs> hopefully you can write things down and do it out. Um, but you get to discover a lot more information about the plot, and again, you have those parts where you have to get through certain information before you can get closer to the true ending. Yeah. Um, and then, I don't know, for those who have not played this, so originally it was on 3DS, um, which is really cool. It actually used like a mechanic of the physical 3DS. You wouldn't understand, I guess, until you got to the end. Um, but now there is a the release with really the good iPhone. voice acting on Steam, um, PlayStation, yeah. you know, everything, systems. all of the above. Um, but yeah, it was really cool to hear it voice acted. Um, everyone did a really good job. So super exciting. <laughs> and now even more people can play it. And they're usually on sale, just as a general, yeah. general <laughs> note. So that's nice. Also, Akane Kurashiki. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! Akane <laughs> Kurashiki. Yeah. But, yeah, if anyone here has not played this game, like, have you only played any of the other games? Like, this hmm. is what I think got all of us into his games. Like, this game is really, really good. Um, great writing, great plot twists, great characters. Yeah. It definitely still holds up, which is really nice. Um, I do recommend if you get the chance to, the DS version is the best version. I wish it had voice acting because I do. I really, really love the voice acting. Um, but just the puzzle I personally like the, the iPhone DS version because so it has no gameplay good. in I can't, it. I like cannot stress enough how much how good it was. Um, blew my mind. <laughs> like holding the DS, I was like, oh my god, like this is really happening right now. Um, so. It, it's just like a very different experience, I think. Um, and I highly recommend playing it on the DS if you are able to find it. Unskippable cutscenes. Yeah, so there's that. Um, yeah, that was an improvement in the yes. new version. So there are some <laughs> great improvements in the new one. The voice acting is great. Um, you can skip um, to different rooms. So basically, like Emma was saying, there are um, a bunch of different rooms that you have to pick to go on different paths. Um, but on the DS version, you have to replay them from the beginning every single time. Um, that just meant that I got really good at the puzzles. <laughs> so, um, so it was pretty quick. Um, but yes, that is definitely an improvement in the Nori Games version. Did you have a question? Yeah. I just wanted to say that I was unfortunately sold my copy of Submarine and 
Defending first, and he was like, Well, <laughs> and then he's like, I, I didn't play the rest, I knew all the information. Yeah, very sad for him, but yeah, yeah. sorry for his he's loss. Canceled. Yeah. Oh, did it? Did, has anyone read the iPhone version that had no gameplay? I have not re done the iPhone version. Has, has anyone else? Anyone actually, have experience? I actually, with I actually that? did. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, yeah it, was, it has a different, a new ending, too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I have. I definitely have to look it out. I don't. I don't have an iPhone, so I guess. Sucks for me. Um, it's not. It's probably it's somewhere probably on YouTube. On YouTube. You can use your PS for ending. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, it did come out on iPhone at some point, which is kind of weird, but it exists. All right. Our next game. Woo! <laughs> oh my yeah. God. No. Yeah, there's so much out of context. Sorry, out of context. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Um, so next game was Virtue's Last Reward. Um, so that was the sequel to 999. Um, very much expanded um, from the scope of the first game. Um, another incredible game. Basically, um, the new concept in this game, there's still nine people, um, but you have an ally and betray. Um, function here. So basically, obviously, whichever one you pick, you're going to get a different result. There are a ton of branching like endings in this game. Um, again, because the ally betray, and then you know all these things happen. But basically, you have to get to nine points to get through the door. door. But if you're Sigma, they don't want you to. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else can leave. But if you're Sigma, you can't leave. Sigma has no rights. Exactly. Yeah, it really doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he's the true Sigma male, but he's not. <laughs> um, yeah, this game is really cool because it uses the example of the prisoner's dilemma with the ally and betray function. That's sort of how you go about figuring out, okay, do I want to work with this person? Are they going to truly cooperate with me or are they going to be Dio? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in case you were wondering, Dio says the frick word um, more times than Santa. <laughs> it's like 40 something, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got 3D models in this game um, instead of the sprites. So, I mean, they look like that. <laughs> um, but. Um, again, really good voice acting, really good writing. Um, this game has so much like crazy science stuff in it, um, which was all super, super interesting. Um, and again, endings that blew my mind. <laughs> it's just a bunch of memes and virtuals last word, and they're explaining it, they're explaining the game. That's valid. Luna yeah, Luna ending, is, ending is for tears. It is very good. Yes. yes. In the music, yes. Yeah, very yeah. good. Luna makes me cry every time. <laughs> Most things make me cry every time, but Luna in particular. That's true. All right, in between the Zero, zero Escape games, we had this lovely anime called Punchline. Um, I'm a Punchline stan. Um, so the basic tagline of the show is, if he sees underwear, humanity will be destroyed. Um, so I don't know what, what you're really going to expect from that, but that is the premise of the show. Um, but spoiler alerts, I cried. Um, so, <laughs> but a basic actual overview of the show is the um, main character, Yuta Iridatsu, lives at um, an apartment complex with four girls. Um, and one day following a bus jacking incident, Yuta finds himself ejected from his own body and he becomes like a spirit ghost. Um, and he's guided by this lovely cat spirit, Shirinosuke. Um, and Yuta must learn to master his spirit powers um, to protect his housemates from um, a bunch of bad stuff going on. Um, but the main problem is if Yuta sees panties twice in a row, the world will be destroyed um, by a gigantic meteor. So true. Um, so it's not like super hard sci-fi um, as much as like the Zero Escape or Infinity games. Um, it is only 12 episodes, um, so it is short. Um, there's also a video game. 
I recommend uh, watching the anime first. Um, the video game, at some point, they just show an episode. So, like, that happened. Um, and it does have some good mystery, I thought. Um, um, it's a little slower to start, so there is, you have to get past, like, the first, like, four episodes of panties and, like, booby shots. Um, but just, like, trust me, guys, it's really good. <laughs> it's, it's worth it. Yeah, it's worth it. It's also very beautiful. Like, the animation's really nice. It's very um, shiny. I also find it very funny that there's always a horny character, but it's the cat here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's genuinely very good. It is slow to start, but I, you know, if you're a fan of his work, I would, you know, continue watching it, hold out. Once you get to, like, reveals, you're like... Yeah. It, had, it, had, it still has those moments. Like, there's still, like, the, like... The thing, you like did the thing, and you um, may cry again. And it is a satisfying ending, um, a satisfying overall story. I think I cried a lot at the ending. Yeah, I think we're seeing a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, recommend Punchline if you get a chance to watch it. Next up is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Zero time dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> it's a game. It, it is a game. Um, it's fun. It's a fun game. Um, so we have, again, nine characters. This is a theme. Um, they are split into three teams. We have D oh, team, there's a gif at the Q bottom. team, and C team. Um, and in order to leave, six of them must die. Um, because once one person dies, a passcode is um, revealed so that they can enter that into the door to exit the room or the building. Um, so this is um, certainly a game. Um, <laughs> okay, like when this game came out, I finished it in a few days. So like it is, it is an entertaining game. Um, honestly, it's certainly not a bad game, I have to yeah. say. It's just we know that people are haters. <laughs> Yeah, no, let me say this is an example of why we're not using, using 3D animation in our So game. valid. <laughs> Just like, look at him. Look at him go over there. there. He, he is okay. having the time of his life. That's how I leave room sometimes, too. That's <laughs> I think I do that a lot, actually. <laughs> but yeah, so this, this um, basically was um, solving some of the loose ends from, uh, VLR left a ton of open ends. Yes. Um, so this answered some of those things, not all of those things. There was like a, a questionnaire or like an interview with Uchikoshi after VLR and a lot of the answers were this will be revealed in the third game. Um, many of them were not revealed in the third game. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. Because um, motives are probably complex. Yeah, yes. I think it's too complex to put in, you know. Life is simply unfair. Um, but, I mean, we wouldn't have even had this game if um, a bunch of fans over in the United States weren't like, why doesn't this game exist? Because in Japan, they were just like, nah, Zero Escape series is just okay, bro. Um, <laughs> so, we're very thankful that this game exists in general. Um, do I wish it would have had some other things in it? Yes. Um, but do I wish it didn't have some things in it? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, but I had fun. Yeah, the oh, ending yeah. is a very long uh, scene. Yeah. yeah. I remember the first time I played the game, I was like, what is wrong with Eric? But the second time watching the game, I found myself agreeing with Eric. He's valid. I know people hate Eric, but my boyfriend is an Eric stan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's like, if, if, I was, like, like if I was put in this situation, I would probably act like him. Um, so, sorry for Eric. Um, he does kind of suck sometimes, though. Yeah, like pointing a gun at a child. But to be fair, we know nothing about <laughs> this character could be there to kill us. I don't agree with him, but you know, he acts like a mostly normal person because most people wouldn't be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna go with this. Yeah, we're not. All, we can't all be a comic or a shiki. Hmm. If only. Shout out to Operation Bluebird. Oh yes. yes, big shout out to Operation Woo! Bluebird. Thank you for their help with this game. Alright, I just have a video that makes me laugh, personally. Oh. Why does he look like that? Why does he look like that? Why does 
science fiction and action anime co-developed by Dandelion Animation Studio and Jumanji. Um, Uchi Kuchi came up with the original concept for this. Um, it was released or started on October 1st, 2018 to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Animax channel. Um, the tagline on the poster material says, when I met myself, I said goodbye to my everyday world. So girls who live in one of these cities perform a ritual. These girls are in something called the Crystal Radio Club. Um, this is an interest circle that a girl named Asuka started with her friends in high school. Um, this ritual was initially just an urban legend, but then some strange things happened, and as they do in Uchikoshi stories, and it's not fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is available on High Dive, and I'm sure you've seen at some other panels that there's a free trial from AX. So here's the code if you want to watch this show. Um, it is 12 episodes. Um, and there was also a mobile game for it. I don't know anything about that. Um, but if you want to watch the show, um, it was, like we said, just the original concept. Um, so it's not going to have everything of Uchikoshi, but it will have some Uchikoshi elements if you're interested in that. All right. Yeah. Woo! Oh, <laughs> All right, so here we are at Eyes of Somnium Files. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just laughing at this. Um, so this is so true. Yeah. A game. Um, essentially, you are what is called a sinker. So you're Date, Mr. Pervert Man, um, who works at a company called Abyss. Basically, you are special agents that work on crime solving um, and you have this thing called sinking where you go into people's dreams to sort of uncover clues um, yeah, you know that exactly. will help you solve this mystery um, this game is epic <laughs> so I don't know what everyone wants to say <laughs> um, leave Kagami alone yeah Kagami is a wonderful man um, yeah, again, really great writing in this game, really great characters, music. Um, the concept of syncing is, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. You can pick all these answers, even if you don't most of the time, like you're not going to finish it on your first try. So you can test out all of these different um, answers and all of these different fun things will happen. They have, you know, the little animations of Iba doing silly things. Um, <laughs> drink soup. Oh, and then okay. put a bucket on your head. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this game is excellent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I heard from my, from my editor that this game, he said he compared this game to how the Zero Escape franchise was like this test, and this is like this follow up for me. That makes sense. Yeah. No, I think there's a lot of really good elements, um, especially the gameplay-wise. Um, the story is, is like really solid, I think. Um, so, yeah. this is definitely one of the games where you go. Yeah, <laughs> anytime. Doing it. Yeah. Very fun. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, play as the sound and files. I'm like a walking. Uh, Advertisement for plenty of our sound files. I think I I watched I watched both of them play it. I played it first, um, and then I introduced it to like at, 
I have these for four other people. Um, so if you need someone, you need someone that can convince your friends to play this game. I'm that person. Please contact me. Um, yeah, play it if you haven't yet, or play it again because why not? Oh, All that's right. one. I'm Our next game is World End Club. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot to ask about this. Who has played World's End Club? Like a, de oh, a right. demo? Yeah, people. Awesome. Um, so World's End Club is this little game. Um, a lot of little people. In which the basically there's like a something going on at the beginning, oh. um, which is like a death game. But that's haha, not real. Uh, spoilers. Um, and it's just these kids traveling across Japan. Um, the Go-Getters Club. Yeah, the Go-Getters Club. We love them. They're very cute. They're all 12. They have a nice little song. They sing a nice song. Yeah, they're very cute. Um, the gameplay is not it. Um, it's a platformer. Um, it's just very clunky. It's very clunky. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, the story is very cute. Um, it's definitely different um, from other it's less serious i have to say well yes um, it deals with children so i think because it is children you know you don't want to go too crazy with making children suffer <laughs> um not that there's not sad parts there definitely is yeah. um but all of those children are perfect and i will um save them they're perfect yeah. also character designer really epic worked on pokemon um they're just adorable um, but basically, yeah, and you travel across Japan, um, I don't want to spoil anything, so I won't, but, um, weird things happen sometimes when you play your character sees some weird things, um, and all of these kids have fun little powers, um, that will help you, like, through your platforming sections, or, um, or not help you, depends. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mochan for president. If you like friendship games or friendship animes, please play this game. You will love it. Yeah. It's very friendship. It's very cute. Um, it's like a, just a cute little guy is how I describe this game. And this is on, so you played it on Apple Arcade first, which is most of the game actually. Yeah, there's actually, so the game first came out on, on Apple Arcade and was like, I would say like two thirds of the game. Um, although it was called a demo, um, which was interesting, um, but then it was released on Switch. Yeah, so, so this is, a, it's it's shorter too, um, than I think most of the other games. Yeah. It's probably, it was like 20 hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a nice little game. I would recommend, you know, if you have, again, it's short, so if you just have some time, so you have your Switch, I think it's a nice game to play. Or watch on YouTube if you don't want to deal with the gameplay. Again, there's also really good voice acting in this game. Yeah. yeah. I like the gameplay. I, I yeah. don't always condemn Maybe watching on YouTube. I, I yeah. always condemn yeah. playing the game if you like it possible. <laughs> that is definitely possible. Yeah, but you still get some of the cool branching storylines, and there's still like the big twists that are really cool, too. Yeah. Right. So, play more time, Club. All right. So. Uchikoshi and some of his lovely friends made a game company called Tukio Games. Um, so Wars End Club was their first, one of their first projects. They also had a few other um, <coughs> projects such as um, Akudama Drive, the anime, was produced by Tukio Games. Um, there was a game called Death Come True, which was like an FMV game that happened, um, and then Tribe 9, which we'll talk about um, on another slide. They also have a few other things that they're currently working on um, as well. Not all of them work on everything, but... Yeah, so they'll like, kind of split it up. Okay, um, so we will talk about, I assume, you know, this is probably what brings us all together to play these games. Um, so he just has a really um, compelling approach to storytelling. Um, not that he neglects the characters, because I think there are a lot of really good characters in the games, but the storyline is like the big, um, you know, it's the big thing. So basically he will write, you know, the plot twist from beginning to end. 
um, which is why everything, I think most of the time, is super well you know, put together. Um, I know for like 999, you use the Enneagram for personality to create characters so you can get all these different types of characters, get a well-rounded cast. Um, and, you know, there was the thing earlier about like mundane protagonists. I think maybe not as much in the newer games. Um, Junpei's funny. Junpei is a very funny, Dante, like, funny. first person <laughs> character. Sigma, cancelled. Just kidding. <laughs> I love Sigma, but he's funny to make fun of, but so is Dante. Um, Mizuki, like perfect. Mizuki, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Mizuki, best character. Yeah, so true. <laughs> Ryuki, also perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers, but I'm in love with him. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, so I think storytelling is, you know, his big thing. Yeah. Okay, so we have some cool things that Jukoshi likes and we like as well. Um, he includes a lot of elements of psychology in his games, and as someone who has a degree in psychology, very epic. Epic. Um, he uses a lot of different like mental illnesses and mental health issues, and then also sort of looks into more of the ideological perspective on things. So looking at reality versus delusion, um, you see some conditions like prosopagnosia, um, you look into physiological development, lots of different sort of little tidbits that he sprinkles in. One of our favorites is multiple worlds theory. Yes. Um, I think about it all the time. What if it's real? Um, <laughs> if it's real, that, then we are as a country. <coughs> says we are in the timeline that got abandoned. <laughs> She's right. I think, personally, I think that there's another world where multiple world series is real. It's very possible. Um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I think that makes for very interesting from a gaming perspective, um, too, because obviously all of these games have branching storylines. Um, so then to use that as a mechanic to bring everything together is very interesting. You also have time travel, very epic. I am a huge fan of time travel, so <laughs> if you can tell me in games or anime about time travel, we tried looking this up and I did not get enough. Yeah, always looking for more. Time yes. yes, loves time skating. Woo! Um, <laughs> And theories and thoughts experiments. I just need to talk about, we all love Schrodinger's cat. Um, <laughs> you know, we do. It's just, it's just a cool thing. It is. Um, but my Schrodinger's cat is every time we go on a trip, if I don't see someone put my suitcase in the trunk, or on the plane in this case, it is Schrodinger's suitcase. I don't know if it's there. <laughs> I didn't put it there. That is Schrodinger's suitcase. So basically, is it there or not? Is the cat alive or dead? We don't know until we look. And I never look, so <laughs> I don't know the answer until we get there. Um, yeah, we talked about the prisoner's dilemma, the Monty Hall problem, you know, she gets cut off before she gets to <laughs> explain it. Um, but yeah, all of this stuff is very interesting. Um, you learn about it in the game, so, you know, um, you learn a lot from these games as well. All right, so before we get into this, I want to play the lovely character trailer yeah. for Somnium Files, which is excellent. You want to fight me? Bad idea. Bring it on. But it is our job to make the incomprehensible comprehensible. Calm down, Mizuki. You can use my functions. Mr. Dante wouldn't want me to just give up. So I need to solve this case on my own. I can't let him down. Then you're the key. I'm going to be my chair once this case is solved. This isn't something you should take on by yourself. I hope my prince charming will appear before me with a glass slipper someday. I've always wanted to be a pilot since I was little. It was my dream to fly through the sky. I work as a mermaid at a gaudy maid cafe called Sunfish Pocket. Would you like to see my face? Out of energy, Genji, Genji, Pachaka Max! The Mets 490 code. I 
Salty. Nice is a perfectly legitimate ideological society. The ultimate dream that humanity has been yearning for for thousands of years. I don't get to action as a project. Why am I so There will be no turning yeah. back. This is what is that? Is it some sort of plan? Wait a minute. I'm all alone. Is that? If my precious subordinate is in trouble, I'll come flying to the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this game just came out very recently. Um, so obviously no spoilers. Who has Six played it? Six power! Our oh, lead age okay. increase! <laughs> That's <laughs> And also this. <laughs> Stop wasting my time! <laughs> yeah, so this game just came out, um, what, last week? Last week? Last Friday. Um, we, we had a marathon, <laughs> like, the game before we came out. Yeah. Um, so if you have not played this game and you've only played, um, Somnium Files, highly recommend this game. It is a lovely, lovely game. Um, the characters are excellent. Um, I know coming into a sequel, you're like, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to like these new characters. They're great. <laughs> um, so, based. Yes, thank you. Um, so, yeah, the characters are excellent. Um, the story is great. The gameplay is really, really improved. Um, yes. There's a lot of. Um, the guess. Somniums are really fun. I think yeah. there's a lot of variety in them. It's, it's. I don't know. It's super fun. It's super interesting. Um, again, obviously, if you like the first one, you'll love this one as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Somniums are also like really well designed. Yes. yes. Like, all of them have like a really like good structure to them. Yeah, no, I I really enjoyed the Somniums in this game and, and I think it gives more hints um, than the first one. Um so they're a little easier to solve, I think. Um even if you have to start over and like redo the whole thing. Yeah. Um yeah, I found it a lot more uh, oh, intuitive, oh, yeah, was it? intuitive people, people than, for than the first one for the Somnium wise. <laughs> No, yo, okay. no. get, get your boy Kong Ming to give him a horse. <laughs> he needs two now. Yes, he needs two horses <laughs> because, yes, because we killed Iris during the Hidden Bats ARG. Kyra <laughs> game! Kyra sweep! Um, so, uh, how many of you know what Hidden Bats is? Okay, just a few of you. So, Hidden Bats was an alternate reality game um, that was going on for a few months. Um, on Twitter. On Twitter, um, in which these characters were kidnapped, um, and we had to help them do puzzles, um, and they were based on this video um, that had a bunch of funky colored animals. Um, so the puzzles were very fun. It, it was a it was a great time. I really enjoyed it. Um, but unfortunately, Iris died um, in that world. No, in that, not in the game. In that world. Um, so that's why Uchikoshi now needs two horses. Um, one of them was just because he wants a horse, apparently. Um, so now he needs a second horse to make up for us killing Iris. Yes. Someone sent him with a horse, perfect cat So true. That's incredible. <laughs> We had right. a friend that was going to bring two horses, but she wasn't able to make it to the con. But she said they're cheering us on from from back home. Yes. Yeah, so there are two horses for him somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And then there's also Tribe Nine. Um, Uchi Koshi is listed as a writer for this game, which I think is also an anime. anime. Not being anime, as mm -hmm. far as we know. The anime is out. The right. anime came out already. Mm -hmm. um, it's about extreme baseball. That's really all I know about it. I'm not. There's gangs anyway. and there's insane baseball. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you look, you'll you'll obviously recognize the art from Danganronpa if you played those games. Um, same artist, Kodak is working on it as well. Um, I think the composer is as well. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. It looks wild. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's the end of our panel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. our socials if you want to follow us um, out, yeah. and that's about it if anyone has any questions we have like one minute left and then i think we wanted to take a picture with everybody oh. yeah. yeah so if, if that's okay with everyone is that good cool. Cool. question back there first yes
when did you get your pre order? Because I already bought it on Amazon and it's uh, been a delay for the past eight days. Okay, yes. So I um, had a wild ride. I had my pre order on Amazon last July 1st. That got canceled. I pre ordered through GameStop. That got canceled. Um, I um, Last Friday, I drove into the closest GameStop and I go, do you have this game? <laughs> and they were like, actually, we might have one that is like $100. And I go, that's exactly what I want. Do you really have that? And they were like, yeah, okay, I think we do. I saw it the other day, but we couldn't put it out because it didn't come out until today. Um, and then they pulled it out and it was the most epic thing ever. I, I was at GameStop, I was like, you guys like literally made my day. Like this was the greatest thing ever. Um, I, I know they've been like restocking them every once in a while, the collector's editions. Um, on Amazon, I've seen restocks, so I think just like keep up with the restocks. It's been like every once in a while. It's unfortunate, I know, the whole situation, but yeah. What I saw with the orders getting canceled was that it was mostly the orders for the PS4. Like most of the yeah, most of them were the PS4 edition, and I think the Xbox ones, I saw a, a few people getting canceled those on. But. I also have to switch one side, no problem. So. I still need to buy it. I'll get there eventually. Friends are free. Thumb. Smile. Fair math. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. All right, if you want to follow these people, I didn't even I didn't even know who these people were until so find Weep Palace. I'll put it in the description. All right, I hope you guys enjoy the panel later. And thanks for coming.